Today, we are looking at the best ways of resting your players to help improve their condition and prevent injury risk in FM24. So the variables that we are going to be looking at to determine injury risk, player condition, so on and so forth, are the fitness variables, which you can see using the in-game editor when looking at a player profile. So we're going to be looking at three things. Overall physical condition, which is a number between 5,000 and 10,000, with 5,000 being the worst and 10,000 being the best. Match sharpness, with 10,000 being the best and 5,000 being the worst. And fatigue, which is a number ranging from negative 500 to 1,000, with 1,000 being extreme fatigue. And of course, in general, you want your players to have a high level of physical condition, a high level of match sharpness, and a low level of fatigue. And then we can see how these variables are represented within Football Manager 2024. Overall physical condition is represented by the heart here, with the 5,000 leading to this very poor heart, and if it was 10,000, it would be a bright green color. So as we can see here, this player's condition is very low, so they have a higher risk of injury. Matt Sharpness is represented by the thumbs up or the different arrows that go under the shape here. So this is representative of Matt Sharpness. All of our players have maximized their Matt Sharpness, so all of them have the green thumbs up sign, just as we have the worst condition possible, so they all have a very low and red heart. Finally, we are looking at fatigue levels. Fatigue levels, you can only see if the fatigue levels are very bad or very high for players. And this will be indicated by the RST needing a rest icon that shows up in this kind of dark orange color under different players' names. So again, we've kind of artificially given them really high fatigue, really low condition, and really good match sharpness to see how resting players might affect these variables. In theory, it should improve fatigue, improve their condition, and lower their match sharpness. So we are looking for the method of resting players that ideally will improve their fatigue the most, will improve their condition the most, and will not have a huge effect on match sharpness. That way, if you all end up playing them, they're at a high condition, they are not fatigued, and they are still match sharp. So we are going to have five methods for inducing rest in our players to hopefully lower injury risk and improve their condition, lower their fatigue, so on and so forth. So the first way we're going to do it is here, and we're just going to put a rest day for all of the training sessions. So we're going to do this over a one week period from this Monday to this Sunday. And we're going to start off and we're currently on the Sunday. So everything, including our player rest and stuff will be fine. So the first thing we're going to do is just do a training rest. So every single training session is going to be a rest period. After that, we are going to do individual player rest for each of our 11 players. In theory, this should be exactly the same as the training rest. And this will, again, start tomorrow. Um, so it'll be the exact same time frame for all of our players. But to individually rest a player for one week, you can go to training, you can go to rest, and then you can rest them for one week. And as you can see, a new slightly lighter icon will come up showing that they are being rested for seven days. And I'm going to go through and do this for all 11 players. So we have training rest, and then we have individual player rest. Our next option is going to be to include a number of recovery sessions mixed in with rest. So a recovery session, as we can see here, is meant to greatly reduce injury risk and reduce fatigue while increasing condition, happiness, and potentially slightly reducing match sharpness. So what we're going to do is you can only include seven recovery sessions in one weeks worth of training. So what I've done is I've just included seven recovery sessions on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. The rest of them will be rest sessions. So in a way, this is very similar to the team rest, the training rest, but instead we're also including a number of recovery sessions. It'll be interesting to see how different this is compared to just the rest one. 
Because if we look at the recovery and then we look at the rest, the rest should be better fatigue and better for condition, but it should also be significantly worse for match sharpness. So it'll be interesting to see how our variables differ between these two different types of training. The next thing we're going to try is sending each of our players on vacation. So this is something that you can generally only do if the physio might recommend a vacation. But to do this, you will go to your training, go to your rest, and under training intensity, go there, go to send on vacation, and we're going to send them for one week. So we're going to click on that. We'll send this player on vacation. And afterwards, he'll end up getting tomorrow a VAC red icon that'll indicate that he is on vacation. And finally, our control variable is going to be just a regular week of training. So I am using my own training schedule, includes several training days, a couple of recovery sessions. There's no match this week, so there's going to be a couple of rest sessions and a match practice. So we have five different ways, and this last one is going to be a control. But we essentially have four ways of resting players and then one week of training to compare all of them together and see how they do. So with all that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do each of those in a separate save file. And so I'm going to have five different save files. And I'm going to come back after a week and I'm going to record the numbers for their fatigue, for their overall physical condition, and for their shape. And then I'll stick it into an Excel spreadsheet. I'll make some graphs and I will show you all the results. So I'm going to simulate those five different methods for potentially resting players. And then we will look back together to see what the results are. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So here are all of the results of this experiment located in my Excel spreadsheet here. So at the bottom here, we have our different ways of manipulating training. So we have regular training here. And these are the results for condition, match sharpness, and fatigue for each of the players. The interesting note with the regular training is it was the only condition where one of our players did end up getting injured. But as you can see here, we have averages of 7491 for the overall condition, um, around 9700 for match sharpness, and 886 for their fatigue. So I did this for all of our different conditions. So this is training. This is the results of the training rest, where we still had them go into training, but each of them were rest. These are the results for where each player was individually rested. This is when we included the recovery sessions. And these are the results for the when we sent each player on vacation. And this leads to our averages here. So we have the table here, and I'll take your eyes here. These are the averages for each of the conditions, but I will talk about this table by looking at the different graphs here. So let's start off here with our overall physical condition graph. This is again exemplified in Football Manager by the green or red or orange or yellow heart, and it is pretty clear here. There was some very interesting results, but sending a player on vacation by far was the best for improving overall physical condition. If we go back to the table here, that was 8,902, which beat out the next best, which was training rest. But the other really interesting result for overall physical condition is that training rest and player rest, for some reason, were different. I have no idea why they were different. But for some reason, resting your whole team from training was better than resting the individual players. And I know what you might be thinking is that, well, when you individually rest a player, it doesn't happen until the next day. So that might have been the cause of this. But on that Sunday, the whole training was rest. And then the next day was the Monday when they were sent on their rest cycle. So I have no idea why these are different and why they are so different. The next big finding for this is that recovery was not brilliant for improving overall physical condition. This isn't a huge surprise. Um, it says in Football Manager that resting the players is better for overall physical condition than recovery. So that's not a huge surprise to see. And naturally, the worst was them still going to train. 
After overall physical condition, next up we have fatigue. So a lower fatigue is better in this experiment. Unsurprisingly, training was the worst, followed by recovery, very similar to what we saw with overall physical condition. But again, the big thing that we're seeing here, vacation was significantly better compared to all the other modalities for improving fatigue. If again, if we look at the table here, vacation was around 588. It was significantly lower than all of the other ones. I mean, it's a huge, huge result. After that, and again, the next surprising thing, a big difference between training rest and player rest. And again, I have no idea why this is. I have no idea why resting your whole team is better than individually resting the player when all of them are being individually rested anyway. I don't know what the difference is. And again, there was no difference in training because even the day before they went on to their individual player rests, I just had three rest sessions for their training. I have no idea why this is different, but there must be something about including rest as actually part of the training schedule that football manager sees as being more beneficial for improving overall physical condition and lowering fatigue. And the final variable we are looking at is match sharpness. And again, some interesting results here. Most notably, that recovery was the best for maintaining match sharpness. I was very surprised to see that recovery at 9,804 was better than regular training at improving match sharpness. This shows clearly that there is some benefit to recovery that maybe I don't know much about, but there is a place for recovery in your training schedules as it does help with match sharpness and potentially reducing um, fatigue and improving condition. But that being said, individual player rest was not far behind. It was somehow also better than training. But potentially, the finding that I find most interesting is that vacation and training rest were exactly the same for match sharpness. This was mind-boggling to me, given how good vacation was at everything else. I thought it would be terrible for match sharpness. But as you guys can see here, looking at match sharpness, Vacation and training rest, exactly the same average. And really looking at all these numbers, they're really not like that different from each other. Like the scale of the graph here is only 1000. So really they're all pretty similar to each other. So I think the big takeaway here is vacation isn't so bad for match sharpness. One week of vacation is not so bad for match sharpness, but is absolutely brilliant for lowering fatigue, and improving their condition. So vacation comes out at the winter. Next, I would say is training rest. After that, player rest, recovery, and then training. So in conclusion, there were some really surprising results to me. The first incredibly surprising result was that there was a difference between training rest and individually resting your players. I'm not sure why that would be, because even on like the Sunday, the original Sunday that we did it, we just had training rest that day. So irregardless, the players weren't showing up for training and resting. I don't know why the game perceived those two things as different. I think that's a very curious result that it is better to, if you can, completely rest your entire team from training as opposed to to just going in and going into training and individually resting your players for a week. Again, I have no idea why there's a difference there because we didn't do anything different in theory between the players. But for some reason, the training rest did better than the individual player rest. Of course, I don't know how often that you would in theory use the whole training rest. I mean, you want most of your players to train. A lot of the times you have one player or two players that you might want to rest. So in that case, it would make more sense just to go to training, rest, and individually rest them. But I found that to be an extremely curious result, something that really surprised me. But the overarching conclusion of this video is that the best method for improving player condition, probably lowering injury risk, and not having too much an effect on match sharpness was just send your players on vacation. 
It did absolutely the best for preventing fatigue, for improving their player condition, and it had no difference in match sharpness compared to training rest. So if you have a week where you don't have a game, instead of individually resting that player, send them on vacation. That is the best thing that you can do to lower their fatigue and improve their condition. But anyways, I hope that you all have found this video to be informative. I hope that you all have enjoyed this football manager experiment. If you have any other ideas for FM experiments that you want me to look at, Leave them down in the comments below, and if they are feasible, I will absolutely do them. But again, thank you for watching this video. I hope you all are having a wonderful week, and I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves. I will see you all very soon. Bye!